Hi guys, I'm Marco D'Ambros and today I would like to talk about how Movask in a joint. Since my 2010, I think, Autodesk introduced this very useful tool that permits us to move a skin and join. So we select the mesh, go to skin, edit smooth skin and move a skin and join. Now we can select the joint that we want to move and we can move without any problem. But it's not about this tool that I would like to talk today. Today I would like to show you how we can do the same identical things but with the Maya node or the Maya skin cluster. Because if we use the Maya skin cluster node, we can Im introduce and implement this system in our rig. So I go to select my mesh, Windows, node editor, and we find our skin cluster node. Inside the skin cluster node, we find all the joint or transform of object that we have skinned. And for each object, we find a connection between one matrix of that transform to the uh, matrix attribute. Inside the skin cluster node, there is another attribute that is very useful and interesting for us. It is the bind parametrics. The bind parametrics are an array attributes and they have the same, the same number of elements than a matrix attribute. This is because when we create a skin cluster, Maya creates, of course, a matrix attribute where there uh, will be the connection with the word matrix of, our, of each object. And uh, the same, uh, the same attribute, but the matrix inverse of the bind pose for each object. If you watch my tutorial about Maya collision system, I'll talk a little bit um, and show what's happening in Maya when we multi multiply the matrix with a, a matrix inverse. This could be useful to understand better a skin cluster as well. Anyway, this multiplication need uh, Maya to find the difference between a bind pose and actually pose. We can it's an attribute, so we can go to override this attribute with our uh, new bind parametrics. So go to create. Uh, transform. Now I'm creating a cube so you can visualize the movement then uh, I go to do. We go to move now the last one so how we can see now how we skin it. We go to snap on the position orientation of the last one. Now we go to take the transform that we want to use it and we got to override the same number of attributes. So joint number five now is plugged to the matrix array number four. So we we got to plug our transform with word matrix to bind matrix number four. Now we can call this one new bind pre matrix four. Oops. Four. Okay. So now that we connect. The, our new uh, new bind per matrix number four word no oh, word inverse matrix sorry this is my mistake oh, you can see here uh, I'm using the wrong matrix is not inverse so I have the the double of the movement sorry for this mistake so word inverse matrix connect okay so now then I use the word inverse matrix everything is come back in the normal so I go to move my joint when I move my joint how you can see everything is worked properly when I go to move my joint plus my uh, new pro matrix, you can see nothing is moved. It's the same of the two, so I can put here and move it. I can put here and move it, etc., etc., etc. So now that we have seen uh, what's happened and how we can like null the movement or like. Uh, reset the new pro matrix bind pairs. We can see um, a little a little example of uh, um, develop a rig with this system. So we go to I just create two layers just for the visibility, so it's easy to uh, make the visibility. Uh, I go to animate, so I hope that you enjoy about about my animation, amazing animation skill. So like this, awesome. So now that we have these two, we need to create another mesh. Doesn't matter what mesh we use it because anyway, now we got to use um, to reset the input input mesh. So we get the mesh number one and mesh number two. So now mesh number one actually is like our base mesh where we will be the our uh, base. Um, main skin cluster and the mesh number two is will be like our offset mesh try to think for example of facial rig or body rig where uh, we have like a um, different number of or skin cluster or blend shape for facial for example a blend shape 
and we want to have like a blend shape that give our base uh, deformation plus we want to have a, the, the cluster or uh, a joint in this example then have the same position of our uh, new mesh and after that the animator can give like an extra animation so this is the uh, this is the, the scenario of uh, this example so we have like a base a base mesh in this case it's skinned but could be like a blend shape or any kind of deformer and we could we go to connect the output mesh with the input mesh here input mesh so now how you can see we have this same identical mesh because we are going to uh, move the output mesh out set our mesh shape number two with the output mesh of the number one now I go to hide the skin and the mesh so now the mesh number two is invisible and our skin our join chain is invisible as well so now we need to create our uh, on a second chain our join chain is one this one is will be on the root and it will be like all our zero way so when we don't want to move our um, our mesh I go for example create here now I go to duplicate this joint on the chain just there. so we have like root zero we have our joint is like mesh attach joint and we go to multiply parenting and now this one will be our offset joint so now for uh, I wanna I wanna move the joint with the uh, with the mesh so I using um, I'm using now the follicle for uh, do this movement so I I I made this little script to um, from one mesh and one position uh, create a follicle in the right place. So I go to get like my mesh number one, the follicle, uh, the world position where I want to create the follicle. So it's the position of the opposite joint. I launch it and create a follicle in the right position. If you're interested, um, I could do another another example, another tutorial about this script. It's very easy and I use the Open Maya, but it's very like straightforward. So if you're interested, maybe I can do a tutorial and explain better uh, what the step that you need to do. So now that we have this follicle here, I go to parenting the, uh, my joint, my mesh attach joint with this follicle. So parent constraint. Now when I move it, then my joint follow with them. I take my chain. I go to. I go to skin my mesh number two. So skin, by by skin, smooth skin. Okay. Now, if I I need to wait it uh, before I need to wait it. So go there. Zero mesh. Replace one and food. So now I don't want to have any kind of movement. So and mesh attach is is locked because anyway I don't want to give up weight and I want to waste this joint here. Smooth, so it is really smooth also. So now, when I move it, how you can see there is a right movement, or oh, me, the movement that, that, that I want. But when I like run my my first my first skin cluster, now um, now we have a, like a double transformation, and this is what I don't want. The same way that we saw before, we need to select our second mesh, go to the skin cluster number two, and see. Hello, this offset joint is plug to the matrix number two. Uh, this is our offset, I have the same transformation of the my offset joint. So show all attributes, bind per matrix. I go to attach my word inverse matrix to the bind matrix number two. So now that I have this connection, how you can see I I don't have any more a double transformation and everything works properly. Same way when I move everything, so you can see everything is work properly without any any kind of problem. So the same situation that we have before on that we have with a tool, the Autodesk tool, we can do with a skin cluster node. Um, if you don't like that the root joint is still always in the zero, we can we can constrain this one uh, that that joint as well. Sorry. Okay, so we can take this one, this one, but and constrain. Of course, now that there is a parent constraint, if I move the joint number two, I will be I still have the double transformation. If I want to null it, I need to do the same process than before. In this case, the null will be the same joint as well. So my root will be the plug and my bind per matrix as well. So bind per matrix. 
and how we can see my mesh has come back in the original position and now I can do like all the movement without the upper transformation. That's it. This is a little example that I would like to show you. So um, it's a very basic example. Um, I, I hope that the goal of this tutorial is give you the base for understand how we work and implement a better system or much more complicated. But anyway, I know that this system you can redo easily with a cluster, but in the production anyway when I work, I prefer to use this system and I explain you why. When we have like a, um, a fascia system with like 100 constraint or 100 controls or more, we need to create 100 cluster. 100 clusters is mean 100 deformation node instead to have just one, the skin cluster. Um, ever 100 deformation node is mean the history you know, of, of our object will be long and dirty because there, you can find like, you need to find like 100, 100 deformer. Um, our connection, uh, so Windows, Node Editor or Hypergraph, whatever you want, will be, uh, you can find here um, a very long tree because there will be like 100 deformer uh, one on, on each other instead to have just one. When you skin, the skin cluster, I mean, the skin cluster is a little bit uncomfortable to move every time and switch between cluster and cluster. Plus, there is no normalized weight, so you need to pay attention by yourself about the overlay of the, the, the weights of uh, each singular vertex uh, or uh, create a tool for that. But anyway, with a skin cluster, it's better because you can decide, you can decide if you want to normalize or not a weight. Uh, import export is just one node instead of 100. You know, there is all these little different things that um, give you much more like um, comfortable to use the uh, one skin class instead 100 deformers. Um, plus, Maya is, is slider because there is just one node instead a lot of different ones. Um, I hope that you enjoy about this tutorial. If you have any questions, dubs or critics, don't hesitate to, to contact me or write me. If you're interested to see the tutorial about um, the script for the follicle, just let me know and maybe I can organize a uh, next tutorial about that. Thank you very much. I hope to see you soon. Marco.